So it's been a hot second. Sorry for my absence. My lens keeps getting fogged up because it's humid out here. So those of you who follow me on Instagram or TikTok may already know this, but I basically broke my face last week. And so today, I'm gonna tell you about it. So most of you don't know my family, but we are pretty competitive, especially me and my dad. And so we are always trying to compete. And so a few years back, we had a pogo stick competition and I lost. And so I will insert the video right here of that initial pogo stick competition. Yeah, it was <laughs> so naturally, there was going to be a rematch of this competition. And so last weekend, I went up to Michigan to visit my dad and I was just gonna spend the weekend there. My sister came up too from Pittsburgh and we were hanging out all weekend. We had gone to the lake that day and we get home that night. My dad pulls out the pogo sticks and it was time to race. So we're in the driveway with the pogo sticks and we're looking at the ground. It's a little uneven, there's rocks everywhere. So we decide this is a little unsafe. Let's go in the road. It's a lot more smooth, it's a lot clearer. So we wait until there's no cars, we're out in the road. My sister is standing on one end and she is gonna be the person who says like, ready, set, go. And she was gonna record our competition like we did before. I was so ready for this competition because I had lost the first one. I wasn't about to lose two in a row. Like my dad is almost 60 years old. So we're standing there. My sister is maybe 20 yards away. And she says, on your mark, get set, go. And we're off. So I want it to be known that usually I'm a pretty good pogoer. And it's a lot easier if you're just standing and bouncing up and down, but we we're trying to go forward. As soon as we started, I felt out of control and I was kind of bouncing all over, but I was winning the race. I was ahead of my dad, but I could feel myself like off balance and I couldn't quite catch my balance. In my head, I'm like, whatever, I gotta keep going, I gotta beat him. So I'm out of control, out of control, out of control. I, I like didn't even know what was happening. And so before I fell, I was kind of thinking I might fall, but it didn't stop me because I felt like I could catch myself. Like it's, uh, I don't know. I, I felt like I could catch myself if I fell. Anyways, I don't know what happened, but I ended up chin first in the ground. First thing I feel is that my teeth are broken and I'm feeling my front teeth. Like, are they still there? Because I'm so stressed about it. Front teeth are all still there, but I feel multiple of the back ones just like cracked. I'm spitting pieces in the road. I didn't know, but my chin was bleeding. It was like on my shorts. And so I stand up right away. I'm grabbing my mouth. My dad is over on the side like, Oh my gosh, oh my goodness, Crystal. My sister's running over from the finish line and I'm just like, oh my gosh, my teeth, my teeth. So at that point, my biggest concern is my teeth because I'm literally spitting them in the road. Here is a picture of some of my teeth that were picked up from the road. So we're trying to find an emergency dentist, can't find it. I can't find my dental insurance card. And so up until this point, I was pretty calm, holding my chin, keep spitting out pieces of teeth, but I was pretty calm. But I got really kind of frazzled when I couldn't find my dental card and I got stressed about my teeth. And so then I started crying, but not because it hurt, just because I was stressed. So by this time, my sister had contacted Heather and she had contacted her cousins who are dentists and they recommended I go to the ER anyway so that I could get a CT scan on my jaw because I'd broken so many teeth. And I had my sister look at my chin. She's in nursing school and she's like, you definitely need that sewn up. So we just decided to go to the ER. I was comforted by the fact that my dad lives near U of M. And so I was like, okay, it's the University of Michigan. I'm gonna be well taken care of. And I was. So I get there, obviously it's a pandemic. I had to go in by myself, which kind of sucked. So I got in, they looked at my chin. They were like, yeah, that definitely needs to be sewn up. These are the docs who sewed up my chin. They were awesome. That guy is a resident and that lady is the attending. They did a great job sewing up my chin and this is what it looked like afterwards. Not pretty yet, but I'll show you what it looks like now in a minute. So I had hospital dentistry come and look at my teeth and obviously a ton of them were broken. I have six broken teeth and one that was partially avulsed, so seven teeth that were messed up. But luckily nothing that had to be done urgently and so they basically just said like follow up with your dentist even though my teeth were falling out in my mouth, but there's nothing else they could really do at that time. Then came the shock. So they got a CT to look at my jaw, and honestly, I wasn't really in that much pain at the time. I said maybe three out of 10, like my mouth was a little sore because I hit really hard. My teeth were broken, but not really hurting, and my chin was just kind of numb at that point. 
And they came back to give me the results of the CT and they told me I have bilateral mandibular fractures. And I was floored. So here is a cut from my CT and you can see that there's a fracture on one side and it's basically the exact same thing on the other side. So your mandible is the lower part of your jaw, the part that opens and closes. And so it comes up here and it attaches like kind of right behind your ears here. And right here is the condyle and I had bilateral condylar fractures. So oftentimes with jaw fractures, they either have to put plates over the fractures to help them heal or they have to wire your jaw shut to let it heal. And so essentially what they decided is my bite fell off at that time, but I had a bunch of broken teeth and my muscles were spasmed. And they essentially said, well, let it calm down until Thursday. This was Saturday. If your bite is still off, then we're probably gonna wire you shut on Friday. And when they're telling me this, I'm just like, so the injury happened at about 8 p.m. I got to the ER probably about 9, and then I got discharged a little after 2. So it wasn't too bad. Actually, everything happened pretty quickly, more quickly than I was expecting. And so all I left with was some stitches in my chin and some instructions to follow up that week. So I decided to get my follow-up here in the South Bend area. The providers here were super good and helpful with getting me in right away. I saw the dentist first thing Monday morning. And they looked at my teeth, like I said, six broken teeth and one that was a vulse that just needed to be pulled. Um, and then they got me in also with the oral surgeon that same day. So the person that I was supposed to follow up with on Thursday. So when I went to oral surgery, I got some great news and some less great news. But essentially he said the fractures were not where he would expect for someone who had an injury like I had. And so it would actually be really bad for my jaw to be wired shut because I actually just needed to move it as much as possible. So he told me to open my mouth as big as I can, stretch it multiple times a day, and basically just try to get that joint moving again so it didn't get stiff. The bad news is that he could see on my imaging that at least one of my teeth were not savable. And so I would need a dental implant. And the rest of them maybe could be saved, but it's gonna be kind of a lot of work. So I just got started with all that dental work. I had a couple temporary crowns placed on Thursday. So on Friday, the oral surgeon pulled the one tooth that I didn't need because it doesn't have a matching tooth on the bottom and it was just kind of out of place anyways. On the other side, he placed my implant, but it's just the post. And so that has to heal for a few months until I can get the actual fake tooth put on it. So this tooth, you can see in my smile. So I am pretty self-conscious about it right now. Um, I'm definitely learning a lesson in vanity. <laughs> I guess, lucky for me, we need to wear masks most places we go. They also said they could make me a flipper if I wanted it for this side, which is like a fake tooth that like pops in a retainer. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that because I also need to get devices in my mouth to pull down some of the teeth to make more room for the crowns to attach. So yeah, there's a, a lot more work to be done in my mouth. I'm going to show you guys my empty space, but like I said, I'm self-conscious about it right now. So it's right there. And... Eventually, they promised me my smile will be beautiful again. I would say through all this, I've remained pretty positive. I mean, I feel so lucky that I didn't break my nose. I feel so lucky that my front teeth are still there. I'm so happy I don't have to have my jaw wired shut. But, I mean, I, I will not say that I haven't had a few breakdowns over my teeth and just being stressed about the whole situation. Obviously, it's like super expensive to get my whole mouth rebuilt and I don't like having a hole here. And so I've had my moments of sadness, but overall I'm just super grateful that this freak accident wasn't a lot worse because it could be a ton worse than it is. Oh, also facial stitches usually come out in four to five days. So I got my sutures out a few days ago and the scar looks amazing already. So this is what it looks like now. You can barely tell. And so you can, you can feel it. It's like kind of hard and you can tell there's a scar there, but. I mean, it looks great and it's under my chin anyway, so you won't see it. So that is another good thing that happened. The scar is in a place, you're not even gonna see it. So as I mentioned, my sister was actually videotaping our race. And so there is a video of the incident. My family has seen it. A couple other people have seen it. I have not watched it yet. I said I'm not watching it until my teeth are fixed because honestly, like it was traumatizing for me. Like I am obsessed with my teeth. I take very, very good care of my teeth. And so like, feeling them crushed and spitting them in the road was like so traumatizing. I cannot even explain it. But my front teeth are there. Like I am so thankful that my front teeth are there. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I appreciate you bearing with me during my absence. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.